In this week's Garage Band Weekly, we're talking all about apps. What are the cool apps on sale and what should you be checking out? We'll also talk about Apple giving in to the right to repair your own devices. Hallelujah. Uh, all that uh, and a ranch uh, all about uh, Apple hardware. Is the software keeping up with the hardware? That and a whole lot more coming up on Garage Band Weekly. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa. Yes, welcome to uh, one hour of Garage Band news and notes and information and opinions and everything in between. And we're brought to you as we are every week by my Garage Band Beginner's Guide over at studiolivetoday.com slash courses. Yeah, hand picked by me five hours of curated content for just $10. So if you are getting started with Garage Band or there's someone in your life that you would like to get into GB that are maybe Garage Band curious, as we like to say, uh, then $10 makes a pretty good gift idea, if I do say so myself. So if Christmas is just around the corner or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever you celebrate, we are not, uh, we are not uh, about what uh, you choose to do here. But uh, studiolivetoday.com slash courses is the place to go. Let's jump into the news and notes and then we'll say good day to the folks here live. If you're watching on the replay, there's timestamps down below. So if you want to jump straight into all of the different apps and all the different plugins and all the different stuff we're talking about today, you can go down there and all the timestamps will be there for you. If you're here live... You just have to wait and listen to me rant. I'm sorry. News and notes this week. I, I alluded to it in the opening section there, and that is that there's been some pretty big news in the last week. And I'll, I'll read directly from the article from ARN, uh, which is linked down in the description. You can read it. So uh, it says the following. Apple has unveiled a self-service repair program that will enable customers to perform their own repairs using genuine Apple parts and tools. The program will be available sh uh, early next year and is to expand in to additional countries throughout 2022. So Apple will begin by offering parts, tools, and manuals to individual owners of iPhone 12 and 13. Beginning next year, customers will be able to use the parts to fix mobile phone display, battery, and camera to begin with. The ability to perform repairs on additional iPhone features will be available later in the year. There's more information there, and it's going to expand out into a bunch of other stuff. So this is probably one of the biggest things that folks are critical about Apple, and look, other manufacturers too, is that there's such a closed system these days. Gone are the days where you could grab your PC and you'd unscrew it, and you'd swap out your video card, and you'd swap out your memory, and you'd swap out your, your display, and everything could be swappable. These days, that's not the case. And um, Apple and other companies have come under quite a bit of scrutiny for not allowing that the right to repair. So this is actually a really good thing because what it is at the moment is you either go to Apple and uh, they, let, let's be honest, nine times out of 10, they just give you a refurbished device and then they'll take yours away, fix that, and then sell that as a refurbished device. Uh, but, or you'd have to go to um, Dodgy Brothers side of the road, hole in the wall kind of repair shop and just cross your fingers and toes and hope that they're not using the dodgiest of dodgy knockoff parts in your precious device. So is this a good thing? Yeah. Will it be revolutionary? No. But like most things, is it evolutionary towards the direction of the consumer? I think so. So um, yeah, fingers crossed that this will uh, be the, the sign of things to come that perhaps, and look, am I interested in opening my iPhone or my Mac anytime soon? No, I'm really not because I don't have the skills. But do I like the fact that someone can then be a genuine Apple parts using uh, fixer upper and I can go to them knowing that they've got the manual and the parts directly from Apple? Yeah, pretty happy about that. So right to repair is a good thing. But let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments as well. Uh, Black Friday and now Cyber Monday are among us. And there's a heap of uh, a heap of good deals that are going around in the app space. Now, I'm not going to touch on this for very long because uh, Jade Star's already done an amazing video. And Jade, if you're here live, if you want to put your link, I'll, I'll make sure I update the description afterwards because I meant to do that uh, with a link to, to Jade's show she did about apps. And I'll be, uh, I'll be going through 13. Why 13? Because... I don't know, 13 is a number. Uh, 13 of the apps that I think are most interesting. Now, these are ones that I already use, but some that I've been tempted by. And maybe we'll spend some coin here today live on the show because there's a couple that if you can convince me, maybe I just buy them. Maybe I bite the bullet and finally get these apps. So uh, app sales are a thing. And uh, you can jump over to appsliced.co. That's where I recommend you go to. And we'll show you that in a bit more detail later in the show. So uh, that is cool. And uh, the Black Friday gear sales were also a thing. So uh, I did a gear video. This one's linked down in the description as well. So last week. 
week. Yep, there's me wearing basically the same stuff. It's my uniform. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that was a show that we did all about, uh, all about the gear that you can use. So uh, there's a lot of gear specials, a lot of other things going on as well. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll continue on here. Uh, that, that, is, that is the news. There's not really a whole lot in the way of news and notes. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll jump over here and say good day, shall we, to the folks who are here live. Oh, there's a lot of you here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've got different styles. It takes different styles to rule the world. Uh, Thomas Christ, Mr. S. M. Borthwick is here. Uh, Jade Starr is here as well. Uh, the Silly Ladies, hello to you. Gregory O'Sullivan, Cody Bradley. So I'm seeing myself over there on that other video. I'm just going to have to stop that. Nothing more distracting than seeing that. Um, hello to Russ8889. Hello to Emilio Cosimo. Uh, and uh, if I've missed you, Clayton Von Kluge. Hello uh, to everybody who's dropped on by here. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, if you've got opinions, if you've got views, and if you've got questions throughout the show, guess what? We are interactive here. You can put the word question at the start of your comment, and that will help me know that there is a question. Uh, hello, Maggie Perry's music. Uh, do I like BTS? The... the uh, the Korean, what is it, K-pop band? No, uh, I don't know anything about K-pop. I apologize. Maybe that could be a, a challenge. Uh, Pete Johns creates K-pop <laughs> in GarageBand. What do you reckon? Worth it? No, maybe not. Uh, let's move on to our rant of the week. And this week, I wanted to talk about this because I got a, a comment on one of my videos this week. And look, I, I answer every comment. So every comment that comes onto every video, I respond to at least once. I can't get back and have big, long conversations about things in the comments, but I do like to at least respond at least once on each one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I got a comment this week that was talking about Apple and basically the disappointment that with all the advances in hardware that we've had, especially in iOS, we haven't seen the advancements in the software. And I wanted your views on this as well, because my opinion is that originally I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're overblowing that a little bit. But when you think about the difference in the, the, the evolution of GarageBand, so I use GarageBand uh, on my, on my uh, Mac, but I also use it primarily right here on my iPhone. Pad. So I've got the iPad Pro 2020, not the 2021, not the M1 chip, but the last A series chip. And look, it, it does an amazing job for GarageBand. I have zero need for any more. In fact, it's overpowered. And here's the thing, GarageBand since version 2.1, where we got things like Alchemy Synth and automation and effects and EQ and all of that, hasn't really gone anywhere. So we've still had 32 tracks. We've still got 24-bit 44.1 audio, but we haven't seen that major upgrade to much uh, in terms of the, the way it works and in terms of the power. And look, even something like Cubasis or Aurea Pro, they are still being designed to meet the specs of the sort of minimum level stuff. Considering the iOS 15, you can still run on an iPhone 6S, you can still run on an iPad Air 2, we haven't seen that pro level of software that matches the hardware. Now, I know we're going to come all the way back to, you know, should Logic be on the iPad? And I know that's a debate that people are sick of, and I, I've stopped talking about it because I'm like, it might happen eventually, and if it does, great, but I genuinely don't really see it. But the, the bottom line with this is that despite the fact that you know, we don't have the ability to put 128 plugins or do an infinite number of tracks in GarageBand. How many people actually need to? How much of it is perceived need for the new hotness versus actual need? So how many people are hitting the wall and it's limiting their music production in the iOS platform because your platform of choice, GarageBand or, uh, or Cubasis or Aurea or Nano Studio or FL Studio, whatever you use, is not actually doing it for you? It's a good question, and I thought I'd throw it out there because I don't really know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that, except for the fact that I I don't I don't hit that wall. I don't hit that limitation. But I'm I'm me, and I have my workflow. Clearly, there's others out there, and I, I wanted to thank the person for commenting because they made a really good point. We're at the point where Apple hardware is accelerating at such a rapid rate that is the software really being left behind? Is it keeping up? I don't know. I, I would like your your opinions on this one. Uh, let's see, Sion, hello, I uh, hope all is well with you, I hope all is well is with you, Sion, as well. Um, Hairbrush Microphone says, the more I think about it, the less likely GarageBand is going to become Logic. Logic is a product and Apple wants to make their money, I would bet my money that they will push users to Logic. And that's the other side of it. I'll, I'll have a quick hydration. 
And we'll talk to that because, yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> Let's be honest, Garage Band is the gateway. Not the gateway drug, it's the gateway. Uh, because it comes for free on every Mac and every iPhone and every iPad ever sold. Well, sold now for the, for the last several years. So it is definitely the gateway. And once you hit that point, I guess the assumption is that you will go to something like Logic or you will go to Pro Tools or you will go to whatever. Obviously, Apple hope you go to Logic. And look, I've been dabbling with Logic and, um, yeah, it's been great. It's been, uh, it, it's good. But am I using all the features? No, not so much. But for others, maybe they will. All righty. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, no, I don't think I've ever seen someone read a comment as they get banned in real time. Yeah, be, be cool. Uh, if you're going to be here live, we're, we're here to have fun, but we're here to talk about music. So if you wanna, if you wanna get, uh, if you wanna get silly, you'll uh, be shown the door. Thank you to our wonderful moderators who always do a fabulous job. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see if we've got any other fine, uh, other questions, and then we will move on uh, to the next one. <laughs> yeah, the, mod, the mods are earning their no pay today. Thank you, moderators. You're all awesome. Uh, if it gets bad, we'll just switch it up to subscriber only, which we've done before and works effectively. Uh, but we'll move on to here because... I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek at one of the plugins or apps that we're going to be looking at in the the app section. Whoops, I clicked the wrong button. In the app section later in the show. Uh, look, I did it again. I just clicked the wrong button, went back to it, clicked the wrong button a second time. I'm really on fire here today. So let's jump over here because there are a bunch of things that are on special at the moment. And the place that I recommend you go, and 100% uh, kudos to Jade Star for putting me onto this way back when, but I I use it all the time now, and that is this one, appslice.co. Uh, there's a link down in the description or just go to appslice.co. What can you do here? Well, you can log in. It does require a login. So you log in, you give it a little bit of your data because that's how things work. Free things need your data because you're paying with your data. But then you can actually track all the different apps and see when they go on sale. You can search for them. You can actually uh, do it by just different category. So what I did here to, uh, while I was, when I was looking for this, we'll come right back to the start. When you come in here and you, you look at your search here, you can see here we've got um, device, all iOS, sort by the latest or popular or ending. And then you can actually come in here and change the category. So these look a bit misleading because they're grayed out. They look like you can't change them. But I put the music and the photo and video categories on here. I hit go and then it filters these down and you can filter by price. You can filter by a whole bunch of stuff. So I went through all of these and uh, went through some of the cool ones. And one of the ones that I saw pop up right here is actually an app that I use. And I don't, I, I don't do a heap of filming on my phone anymore. But when I do, I use this app. And it's called Movie Pro, and it is a professional level camera for your iPhone or your iPad, I suppose, but it's better on your iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw my iPhone, not out the window, but I'm going to throw it here onto the screen, and I'm going to give you a look at what Movie Pro is all about. So I'm loading up Movie Pro here, and uh, you can see, there it is, you can see my background. But what I'll do is I'll actually share this over using Reflector 4, which is the reflection software that I use since... Even though Apple actually do allow you now in Monterey, in Mac OS Monterey, you can share to your screen, you can't actually bring it up on the screen. So you can't bring it up while you're doing something else. It takes over everything. So uh, it's, it's less than useful. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can actually do is if I bring this up here now, you can see Movie Pro over there. Now, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll unshare this one here. I'll stop mirroring my iPad. There you go. So you can see this in its full screen glory. There's my coffee cup. There's the iPad doing its thing. Uh, here's, oh, we're getting Inception. We won't do that. So Movie Pro, the reason that this is cool is it's five bucks at the moment, down from $10. So it's on special. It's an on sale at the moment. And what you can actually do is change all of the different settings. So it's a camera. It works exactly as your regular camera does. You can lo lock the focus, which is always handy. You can adjust a whole lot of things just like you can with the regular camera. But here's the thing. You've got a bunch of different settings in here. If we tap this settings button, check this out. You've got presets that you can set and you can actually adjust all of the different resolutions. So you can shoot widescreen. You can shoot regular standard definition. You can change the video encoding. So the standard camera app doesn't actually use the full video encoding possibility. So you can pump this up to 400% of the standard bit rate. So if you want absolutely high level stuff, you can do that. You can adjust HDR, you can adjust the audio. So if you're trying
trying to match up, say you're doing video and you want to match up the audio to your 44.1 so it'll match something that you're creating in GarageBand, guess what? You can come in here and you can flick the audio. So it means you never have to do that audio conversion. You're never going to lose any quality of your audio. You're sampling it at the rate you're going to use it. And you can even do uncompressed audio. Now, this is going to make your file sizes massive because <laughs> uncompressed audio takes up a lot more space. So for your regular run-of-the-mill stuff, you won't need it. The other cool thing is you can see over here on the left, you got audio metering. That is really cool because you can actually see if you're recording, am I clipping? And when you plug in, you can see there it says it's using the back mic at the moment. You can adjust that microphone and you can plug in your other devices, your USB microphones, your audio interfaces, and it will give you full control over that. And you can see that when I'm clicking on either side, it's, it's showing the stereo-ness that's a word, I just made it up, the stereo onus of the microphone. All right, I'm going to stop Blair witching it there. I'll, I'll bring it over here because you don't need to see that anymore. But yeah, it, if, you, if you've ever wondered when, I, um, when I'm doing things like uh, videos where I'm out and about and uh, you're like, oh, how does Pete get the video quality looking so good? Um, it, it's nothing I do. I just load up Movie Pro and all the presets that they have in there, they just make your videos look better. And if you're using an iPhone on iPad, instead of, and especially your older stuff. So even on my iPhone 6S and even on my iPhone 10, it actually makes the video quality a lot better. So if you're like, oh, I really need to get myself a brand new, uh, a brand new iPhone because my camera is not as good. Well, maybe you just need to uh, check out Movie Pro. And there's another app that's very similar that we'll be uh, showing a little bit later. Yeah, stereo, stereosity, is that the word? Yeah, yeah, sorry about the Blair witching it, but I thought it would be cool to, for you to be able to see all of the things. Uh, look, Clayton Von Kluge has a good point. It does have a steep learning curve, but the good thing is you can just set it and forget it. And if you want a, if you want a good uh, view, oh, sorry, a good tutorial about it, um, over at Primal Video, Justin Brown Primal Video is an Australian creator and his channel is amazing. Uh, how much is Movie Pro? It's four ninety nine, so it's really super affordable. So it's only, uh, it's usually nine ninety nine at the moment. It is just four dollars ninety nine, uh, and it's a very very cool app. As you can see there, it does a lot of good things, and uh, it's worth checking out. There it is on the App Store for four ninety nine US dollar bucks at the moment, and the the developer is pretty responsive and and uh, often updating it. So it, it's worth a look, to be honest. Um, it it it, does, it won't solve all of your problems, but it it will help, uh, especially for audio. Like that's the the biggest problem with shooting video on your phone is trying to get the best quality audio. So actually having the ability to set your audio level and monitor that audio while you're filming, it's kind of next level. And you can use both cameras as well. So you can use your front facing camera, you can select which of your back cameras you're using. It's a good deal. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, uh, let's continue on. Uh, and look, I think there's an Android version of it as well. I think there's definitely an Android version of the other app that we'll be looking at a little bit later. And I'm sure, I'm sure Android will have their own sales and things as well. So uh, that is my, that is my plugin or app of the week. Check out Movie Pro. Quick drink and then we'll move on. Now, the tip of the week I already kind of alluded to, and I've actually already, I kind of did this out of order. My tip of the week is App Sliced because it is the best way. Like I, I've found whenever I need to know what the price of something is, I don't go to the App Store because you don't know what it was, what it is. It doesn't show it clearly. Like, look at this. It just says $4.99. You got no idea whether that $4.99 is it on special or is that the regular price of it? Like, what, what does that actually mean? Whereas when you go to App Sliced, you not only get the price there, let's just zoom this in, we're not, there you go, that's going to that's gonna be easy to read. So you not only get the details here and the price, if you uh, click on that price, oh no, that took you, takes you to there, forget that, uh, it's further down here, isn't it? Here it is. If you scroll down, is what I meant to say, you can see that these are the prices. So it's, you can see here that $4.99 is about as cheap as it gets. It was $2.99 for one day back in 2017, but since 2017, it has not been, uh, it has not been anything. And look, this is pretty cool. Movie Pro Remote is actually free at the moment. That, I didn't show that, but the other part of Movie Pro is that you've also got, do I, I don't have this shared anymore, but there's also an app called Movie Pro Remote. So if you're using multiple devices, if you've got an iPad, you can actually use the iPad to control, oh, I, don't have a, I don't have it installed on the iPhone because I don't use this as a remote, uh, but you can actually use the remote app. And uh, by the looks of it, that remote app is currently free on the App Store. Look at this. 
we can click through. Yeah, there you go. So for five bucks, I, seriously, and look, it, it doesn't have great ratings there because it, like most things, it needs Wi-Fi and it's a little clunky to use the remote. Uh, but if you're setting up a camera and you want to be able to control it remotely and shoot it from like the other side of the room, uh, you can do that via Wi-Fi with that one. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so we're back to App Sliced. <laughs> yeah, so the cool thing about App Sliced is you can see what's on special. You can set yourself alerts. It's basically like a must-have. If, if Audio Share, which we'll talk about later, is a must-have app for, for your GarageBand users, AppSlice.co. If you're ever buying any apps on the App Store ever, you need to check out AppSlice.co. And again, thank you. There are lots of ads over here. So yes, you pay with your data and you do have to watch ads and annoying banners and pop-ups come there. But hey, they got to pay the bills. Just like you probably saw an ad or you may be watching an ad right now, if you're watching the show, then uh, yeah, we, we do have to pay the bills. Sorry, I, ho I hope I remember to go back and place the mid-roll ad right there. <laughs> that could be a bit of fun. Oh dear. Uh, Mike and Dawn says, I do love my iPad Pro, which has the better camera, etc." Yeah. And again, you can use this on your iPad Pro, like especially your ones that have the diff three different cameras. On the regular camera app, it's really hard to tell what camera it's using. So if you really want to use the wide angle camera uh, with Movie Pro, you just set it to the wide angle camera. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's continue on here. Uh, our resource of the week, uh, is not surprisingly the beginner's guide. Uh, and I am still working on it. People have been asking, you said about six months ago that you're working on an advanced course. Uh, I've done the beginner's guide and I'm ready for the advanced. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it is still a work in progress at the moment. We're all just a work in progress after all. Uh, but again, if you are new to GarageBand and you want, it's kind of like the best of. And you might be saying, Pete, why would I pay you $10 to get stuff that's on your YouTube channel for free? And that's a great question. But uh, the cool thing about this is it's five hours of curated content. It's completely transcribed. It's completely searchable. So you don't have to guess and it's in order. So it goes through getting started, how to record, how to mix and master. So it goes through the whole step by step process and there's a video there at each step that shows you exactly how to get it done and what you need to do so garage band uh sorry you can go there to studiolivetoday.com slash courses and the garage band beginner's guide and we thank me for my support of this show <laughs> it is weird when i'm a sponsor of my own show but that's how we roll sometimes all right are we ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Uh, let's just see if we've got our iPad. Sh no, no, that's right. We, we stopped sharing our iPad screen. So let's get the iPad back on here and we'll do a quick test so that we can make sure that we can actually utilize some of these, uh, some of these apps that we're going to be talking about as we go through our 13 power apps, the apps of power. Sure. All right. Let's uh, bring this up. The iPad is there. Yes, we're going to turn on monitoring. Let's make sure that our audio monitoring is working. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, girl. You ready? You're ready for dish. We're ready. It's good. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so I'll just make sure that I can bring up my screen there as well. Yep, there we go. And uh, we'll be ready to go. I'll just kill off some of these that we just went and added there. Oh no, I killed the one. I killed the one that I meant to keep there. Let's uh, let's just go to there. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just talk amongst yourselves while I get my snizzle together. Uh, open the link of the tab. All right, there we go. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, we'll come back over to here, and uh, we're going to uh, we're going to jump in. Every year, Black Friday is upon us. There are so many apps that can get overwhelming knowing which ones to check out. So what I'm going to do here is go through 13 of the coolest apps that are on sale right now here in November 2021. Let's jump in and take a look. The first one that we have is for your video. So if you're trying to capture video uh, and you're using the regular camera app, here's the problem with the regular camera app that you have on your iPhone. It doesn't have a lot of options. You can't do things like control your audio. You can't do things like um, adjust the camera you're using, adjust the focal length and make sure that that stays in, in place. 
It's good, but it's not great. You know what is great and what I use when I'm on the go and I want to use something better? It is this one. It is Movie Pro, Pro Video Camera. And it is at the moment, it is on sale. So it is $4.99 US dollar bucks, which is usually $9.99. And this is one of the cheapest prices that you're going to find. Now, what I'm going to be using to show these is a, a website called appsliced.com. So you can just go to apps, uh, appsliced.co, in fact. So you can go to appsliced.co and sign up and follow along. All of these are link down in the description as well. But if you come over here, this is it in the App Store. It is a very, very cool app and uh, I, I highly recommend it. Get some pretty good ratings there and uh, it does a lot of things for you. Uh, like I say, if you're using your uh, an external microphone, it has things like audio leveling. It has the ability to monitor your audio. It has a whole bunch of presets and it just makes you your your webcam, your webcam, makes your camera on your iPhone next level. It really increases the quality of that. So uh, Movie Pro is a great option. And here's something that uh, that we just discovered as well, is that the Movie Pro remote app is currently free. So normally you'll pay 10 bucks for the Movie Pro app and five bucks for the remote. At the moment, five bucks for the, for the camera and the remote is free. So uh, even, even if you're at some stage, you do have a few ads here on App Slice. Even if at some stage you might get Movie Pro, download the remote now and get it for free. And that way, if you, if you don't decide to buy it right now in the future, if you want it, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, now, these are all in, in US dollar buck prices. So if you're not in the US, you will have to convert yourself. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is one that I've actually been considering for a while. This is the biggest competitor to Movie Pro, and it's called Filmic Pro. Yes, it's another video camera app. Yes, it has its own uh, remote as well that you can check out there. So I've been considering this one. Now, it, it is the cheap, it is pretty cheap at the moment. It has gone on sale for $4.99 before, as you can see here on App Sliced. But $7.99 is pretty good for this one at the moment. And what does it do? Well, it does all the same stuff as uh, as Movie Pro does. So do you need both? Not really, uh, but it does, have, uh, it does have the same sort of functionality. So if you want complete control over your camera and being able to do that, you can do it. Now, uh, let, let's see, just for my Australian friends, let's see if I did want to buy it, how much it would actually cost me. Uh, I'm usually, I used to know all the conversions, so when it was $7.99, I'd know exactly what that co would cost here in Australia. So it, it, it is for uh, $12.99. So for my Australian friends, $12.99 for Filmic Pro, and then you can see there that you've got the other, there's a bundle there. Don't get the bundle. <laughs> Here's the thing, at the moment, your bundles, so your bundle is $30.99, but check this out. If you bought the camera and the app separately, you'd only be spending $21. So when things are on special, be really careful and make sure that you uh, you check those out because if you buy them the wrong way around, you may regret it. So uh, if you are looking to up your camera, and look, you might be saying, this is a GarageBand show, Pete. Why are you talking about camera apps? Well, most people that create GarageBand songs and you want to share them, you need to create some video. So if you want to shoot your own music video, if you want to shoot some behind the scenes, you want to shoot some band practice, it just gives you more control over your ability to shoot video in iOS. So I think it's pretty darn cool. Uh, let's move on to the next app, which is one that I've been recommended to. So folks, convince me, those, those that love Nano Studio and use Nano Studio, it is on sale right now. Nano Studio 2 by Blip Interactive, $19.99 down to $9.99. So it, it, it is pretty cheap. Uh, and it does say here that it can get down to five ninety nine, but I think that ten bucks for Nano Studio is pretty good. Now I don't use Nano Studio, but some very cool artists that I love, such as Russ eighty eight eighty nine, right here in the community, they do use Nano Studio, and I've been very super tempted to pick it up. And if I'm going to pick it up, it should be now. So what do you reckon? Uh, let, let me know. Uh, we're recording this video live. So if enough people say, yes, Pete, you need to try Nano Studio, uh, we'll buy it live here on the show because it is $14.99 here in Australia. And uh, folks like uh, Russ loves Nano Studio. Jade Star thinks Nano Studio to rock. So, uh, so get behind it. We'll, we'll do some live purchasing. Maybe we can actually check that one out uh, at the end of the show. <laughs> Could be interesting. All right, this one's going to be quick because if you are a creator in in iOS, buy this. Just get Audio Share. It, it's usually five bucks. Right now, it is three dollars. Three dollars for Audio Share. It is the best three dollars you will ever spend for your creations in iOS. I use Audio Share 
on the daily. In fact, let's jump over and just prove that I use audio share. So this is where I put all my audio. This is my holding zone for all the audio that I'm using. Audio from songs, audio where I'm trying to remove vocals, audio for my videos, the masters for my whole albums. Everything goes into audio share. Why? because it's just a one-stop shop. You can store it, you can set your folders, and then you can come in here and you can play. Because we're all just a work in pro. Directly from here, you've got a bunch of simple but very effective editing tools like normalizing, converting, trimming, and fading. You can share directly out of Audio Share straight out to anywhere else you want to go. It's got a built-in high-quality audio recorder that works absolutely beautifully, and it's got my favorite feature, which is this one, the Wi-Fi Drive. If, like me, you're sharing large files between a Mac and a PC and an iOS device and an Android device or anything, use this. Use Audio Share because it's just the best. All you do is it's just on your local network, you pump in that address, and then it brings it up. It brings it up directly on your other device, and you can shimmy all your files around the place. So I use this for this. Here's how I'll use this. I'll, I'll tell you right now. What I do is at the end of a show like this, so we're, we're recording this live on GarageBand Weekly, and I'm going to take this video and turn it into its own video. All I do is grab Audio Share, log in, and then I'll download the full stream from StreamYard that I'm doing right now, send it over to my phone on Audio Share, and then I have the full video. And then I throw it into LumaFusion, which we may be talking about in a moment, and I edit it. It's as simple as that. So very, very cool. Uh, so audio share for the absolute win. If you don't have it for three bucks, my goodness. Seriously, if if someone, I was about to say, if someone, if you don't have it, email me and I'll buy it for you. But that could be very dangerous. We could have a uh, hundred people watching the show and saying, buy me audio share, Pete. <laughs> uh, how is that different to AirDrop? Uh, it is not super different. It's a lot quicker than AirDrop I've found. And because it's using Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth, uh, you don't get some of the issues that you get with AirDrop. Plus, you can choose exactly where it lands. It goes straight into to audio share and then you can move it directly to a folder whereas airdrop it tends to just chuck it where it wants but it's a good question um yeah usually you'll find that your wi-fi is a lot quicker to go between your two devices than uh, bluetooth is so that's why i recommend audio share as thomas christ says it is a must have just get it just get it i don't say that about many things because i don't think you should spend money unless you really have to and that's one all right, AUM is our next one. I don't own AUM. And in fact, I'm going to buy AUM right now because I've been told by enough people that I trust enough times that I need AUM and I need to check it out that I'm just going to do it. Now, AUM is a weird one. It is it is a routing device. It is a DAW. It is a recorder. It does a lot of things, but it's kind of hard to explain. And I think that's the reason I've never bought it and I've never done a video on it is that I find it hard to understand exactly what it does. Jade Star has some great videos on it. I need to go and do my training, but here's the good news. It is only eleven ninety nine at the moment or here in Australia, that means $17.99. So what do you reckon? I'm, I'm just going to buy it. Uh, I've, I've, again, I've heard too many good things from too many people that I trust that we're going to buy it here. I'm going to uh, I'll just do this off camera. Camera covered. <laughs> Got to use your face ID to buy things. All right, I've just bought uh, AUM for uh, for the low, low price uh, of $17.99 here in Australia. So there you go. It's added to my library. Just in case you don't think I put my money where my mouth is sometimes, uh, sometimes I do. And look, sometimes uh, I'm 100% honest. Sometimes I get uh, the, the apps given to me uh, by the, the actual um, developer. But in some cases, it's quicker, easier, and uh, if they are good, a good developer, which I've heard uh, developer uh, Kymatica, is that what they're called, uh, for AUM is good, then I will just get it. So there you go. <laughs> Stay tuned. Prepare for, uh, for AUM videos here on the channel. I just have to go and watch a bunch of Jade Star videos so I can learn how to use it. But AUM uh, is worth considering if you're using a bunch of different apps and you're trying to bring them all together. A lot of people are, uh, are happy with that. Uh, in Australia, iPad screens are upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Uh, and uh, we run on kangaroo power and drink Foster's beer. We don't. All right. I alluded to it here, but uh, next up is Luma Fusion. So you know how I said before that uh, when I send, in, in fact, you know what? I'll, I'll, let, let's show you exactly how I use Luma Fusion because I've got the ability to, I use it on my phone. A lot of people use Luma Fusion on their iPad and it is a great iPad app. Like it's a great uh, video editor to use right here on the iPad, but I tend to use it on my phone. Why? Because I can use it wherever I am. I can use it on my phone when I'm out walking. Uh, here's the last uh, project that I did actually edit here on the iPad, but I can use it while I'm out walking while I'm on the bus, while I'm waiting in line uh, at the hairdresser. Yep, 
doesn't happen. <laughs> but um, LumaFusion on iPhone is is very very cool. So uh, why don't we jump over? And I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the project that I've uh, recently was working on that you would have seen here. Uh, so I'm going to share my iPhone screen. It's going to throw my iPhone screen up here next to, so you can see side by side comparison. Uh, and as Sion said here, the good thing about LumaFusion is if you've got an M1 Mac with the M1 chip, you can actually use it on the Mac as well. So I know this is going to be pretty small because it's uh, it's portrait mode, and there's not really any way around that to to, to make it bigger to embiggen it here because it's got to be portrait, uh, but this is how I do all of my video editing. So what we were saying before is I, I bring it into Audio Share. So I come here into Audio Share, and what you'll see is I've got this video import. So I'll import the video directly in here, straight from my Mac, and then it's here, it's ready to go. I then go over to LumaFusion, I import that video straight into here, and then I go my hardest. So here's how I edit. I just come in here, and you can see I can do my bottom thirds there, I can do transitions, I can do jump cuts, I can do everything in here, and LumaFusion has a bunch of very very cool tools a heap of audio tools that you can use in there uh, to, to change up your audio and to add different plugins even these days it's got a whole bunch of cool things you can do so um the the motion graphics so you'll notice that when i have this one here it brings it up from the bottom so that's actually using some uh some motion graphics to bring up the the thing at the bottom there and then to drop it back down again so you can do all sorts of cool things in luma fusion it is next level if you're using imovie on your ios devices look there's nothing wrong with imovie but to get yourself set up right now for twenty dollars you buy it once and here's the other cool thing a lot of the video editors in ios are subscription based which means that you have to um, pay a subscription or they'll update and when they do a major update you have to pay for the new version the good thing about LumaFusion is you buy it once. I bought it once. Look, I paid about $50 for it. So I bought it at its peak of its price. But for you right now, you buy it for 20 bucks and then you get all the updates forever. And that, like I say, each version is getting better and better. And whenever you watch an Apple uh, keynote or anything, uh, they always talk about LumaFusion. It's it's basically become their go-to when it comes to um, when it comes to video editing. So uh, and yeah, and on the iPad as you saw there, especially if you're using a mouse and keyboard, it uh, yeah, it makes it a great little editing platform. It's basically just like editing on a desktop. It's amazing. LumaFusion for the win. Uh, and yeah, again, it, it, we're going with a combination here. Some of these apps are ones that I've been told to get forever, and some of these are apps that uh, that I use on the daily. So uh, hopefully there's something in here that might pique your interest. But if not, don't. Like, don't buy stuff just because you think you should. Buy it because you want to. Uh, if you want to get into synth, look, I'm not a big synth guy. Look at all these ads. My goodness. Yeah, okay. They're paying the bills. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, Audio Kit's Digital D1 Synth is a very, very, very cool option. Um, and look, I'm not a synth guy. I'm the first to admit that I am far from a synth guy. I don't use synths a whole lot. But uh, I actually kind of love this one. Patrick from the Garage Band Guy was the first one who put me onto it. And at the moment, not only is it not, is it only five bucks, it is only three dollars 2.99 to grab this one so uh what does it do well let's jump over here into GarageBand. you can use it standalone of course but um here in garage band we can add it as an audio unit instrument which makes it super handy we can go to the digital d1 there and uh Now, if you're like me and you get super intimidated by all the knobs and dials, you probably want to spend a bit of your time here in uh, the presets. So <laughs> there are a whole bunch of presets. You can even search your presets in here. So uh, you can come in here if you wanted to find, let's find some cool bass presets, shall we? There you go, we've got the uh, bass face. So we can add that one here. And How cool is that? Listen to that stereo. Brrr epic so yeah there, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in here and i won't i don't have time to go into it in detail here but um yeah if, if you're starting out with synth stuff then um yeah you really can't go far wrong playing around with the d1 for three bucks for three bucks why not throw it out there give it a go and uh, the audio kit folks are really cool people so uh they yeah you're supporting people that are, are doing good work because don't forget a lot of app developers they're people like you and me and lenny <laughs> not lenny all right okay so we talked about it at the start here but um 
if you are using GarageBand, I know it's it, this may be sacrilege, but I also use Cubasis sometimes. I know, I'm sorry, but uh, Cubasis is kind of cool. It is made by Steinberg, and you know that I'm a big fan of Steinberg and their interfaces and a lot of their hardware. Uh, but Cubasis uh, over here, it, the Cubasis 3 on iOS is currently half price. So yeah, ordinarily you pay 50 clams. It is only $24.99. So if you've ever been Cubasis curious, you may want to actually check it out. Why would you use Cubasis instead of GarageBand? Well, you've got more tracks. You've got more ability to do things like automation. You've got more options like time stretching. I, in fact, did a whole song using Cubasis, and uh, there's videos here on the channel. So if you search my name, Pete John's Cubasis, you'll find uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, what is this song? This was the last time I've actually used it. Is this the song we created? I can't actually remember. There you go. So this was um, Time McFlies. So the song that I did uh, under my name, Righty Doki, uh, we created this all. And Cubasis, you can do everything in here. You know, it's not just about synth sounds and virtual instruments. You can record vocals. And again, they've got lots of different effects in here built in. They've got a lot of different uh, built in MIDI instruments and cool synth sounds. And uh, there's also all of the Waves plugins that you can use in here, which I still haven't explored in detail. I need to go back and, and actually start using some of these because there's some very cool plugins. And uh, I, actually, I actually got hold of all of these different Waves plugins uh, a while ago. Never actually went in there and tried it out. So, yeah, if you are feeling like you're hitting the limitations of what uh, GarageBand can do for you, it may be worth, oh, and the mixer. The mixer here in uh, Cubasis is really cool too. So you've actually got yourself some proper faders, you've got full automation, you can change up, you can do uh, everything right here in Cubasis. So again, I know it's, it might be sacrilege in a GarageBand show to talk about a competitor, uh, but it's worth, it's worth checking out. And if you're not ready to buy yet, uh, just check out the videos that I have here on the channel because you may, you may learn a few things about Cubasis and you may decide that it's something that you want to check out some more. All right, next app. Let's bring up the next app. It is <clears throat> another synth. Yeah. So uh, we've got some Moog action going on here, and I will say it as Moog instead of Moog because I got a little bit of uh, a little bit of guff from folks talking about Moog before. So you've got the Model 15 modular synth. Now this one is, is going to be a bit costly, but it's it's 19.99 down from the full 29.99, and this is for your real synth heads. This is for people that want to get into all of the <laughs> all of the stuff, like the whole analog. Yep, how do you do it? You put chords into other chords, all of that sort of business. So, uh, yeah, it's not for the faint-hearted, but if you are into your Moog and if you're into your history and if you're into your, your modular synthesizers, it's definitely worth checking out. Wait, don't, don't, don't freak out too much. What if you just want to taste? Well, this is the one that I actually dig, and I did a video about this recently, the Mini Moog Model D synth. So this one's only 10 bucks. So if you want to get your Moog on and you want a simpler way and a cheaper way, uh, the Mini Moog Model D is pretty darn cool. Uh, it's a classic audio analog synthesizer and uh, it looks pretty cool but let's not just show it there why don't we jump over and take a look at it here live i could use it in cubasis but i get confused in cubasis it's not it's not my spirit animal so if we come here into garage band we should be able to add it in here hit the plus button here once again we'll go to an audio unit extension and uh where did i put it the mini moog model d here it is and uh, now th these sounds usually blow your head off so i'm gonna have to um turn the volume down here There you go. You've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. And uh, what, what I normally have shown, well, that's not your preset button. Uh, what I normally do is come in here and just play around with a bunch of the different presets here. Like go the alien preset. So what about some dirty trumpet? That was my nickname in high school. Yeah, so Model D, uh, as Thomas Christ says here, yeah, is a very good uh, synth app here. Um, totally, totally worth checking out. Jerry Gomes picked up the Model D and love it. Yeah, just the, the only problem with the, the Model D and with a lot of these apps is, uh, especially your synth apps, is you spend more time noodling with them and just playing around with the different sounds and actually creating music. But 
hey, you learn something along the way, don't you? you you'll learn about uh, what sort of sounds you want to create and how you want to do things. So the Moog Model D. Yeah, the presets are super loud. So you, you always have to turn your volume down. When I did my original video uh, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't have the volume down and it went and it basically just distorted the whole audio of the stream. So yeah, be very careful. Use it in moderation. Use your Moog sense in moderation. All right. Now, this is another one that I think I'm just going to buy. So the Agonizer, the Agonizer Synth. So Agonizer is a monophonic synthesizer designed in collaboration with YouTuber and synth bass expert. You know him as Jakob Hack from Hack Attack. And I actually interviewed Jakob way back when this came out and I totally thought I'd bought it and I totally haven't bought it. <laughs> so I'm going to bought it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to bought it. Uh, it is $9.99 down from $19.99 right now. So uh, yeah, to support cool people that make cool apps, uh, let's go ahead and buy it, shall we? Let's go to our app store. And uh, check it out here. Uh, where are we? AUM. We can just go agonizer. And there it is. So here in Australia, it is $14.99. Agonizer. It's a bad man thing. I'm just going to uh, jump off the screen here while I hit that purchase button. Because it'll bring up various things that nefarious people may want to get hold of. <laughs> uh, so I'll double tap my button. It'll look at my face. Here I am. Face not recognized. Oh, God. Try again. Oh, no. What did it fail? All right. Tap it. It's going to get in close here for a sec, folks. It keeps telling me I'm like covering the camera and that it won't work. All right. I am now an owner of the Agonizer synth from Jakob Hack. And um, who's the developer? Sorry. It, it is Jakob. He was sort of in there, but the actual developer is Kai Aris. So uh, why don't we just open it up here? Because I think you can use it in, in standalone mode as well. Let's, uh, let's see. There you go. Yes, we'll continue with that. There he is. Look at him. Uh, I, I don't even want to try and be as cool as Jakob Hack. He's, he's, he's the man. It's Jakob, it's Jakob Hack's, Hack's world. We're all just living in it. Or do you got some new sounds in there? All right, I'll check it out later. Oh, no, I'm not going to rate you right now, Jakob, but I'm sure you're cool. Yeah, I'm going to have so much fun playing with this. Um, I don't know where I'm going here. I'm going to have to watch. I, I bet Jade Star or someone has done a video on this. I think Jakob's actually done a bunch of I should probably go watch Jakob's videos. Uh, let's go. Uh, we've got some wubs. Jakob's kind of uh, famous for his wub wubs. So um, can we find anything with a wub sound? Let's just let's just show. Uh, what's the yeah? That's the pad. Whoa! What sort of drum sounds have we got in here? What about a kick? All right. Yeah, so fun times ahead for me. I know I'm I'm, I'm totally upping my uh, app game here today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing with uh, AUM and playing with uh, with the Agonizer synth. I'm gonna be like uh, I'm gonna be taking a leaf out of the book of many of the other YouTube creators that do a lot of this stuff. But don't worry, I won't. I don't do it as well as they do. But um, for those that are, are like me that want to learn how to do this, can I can I get a better view of this keyboard down here? I'm sure I can. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Leave it with me, folks. We'll learn. We'll learn together uh, when when we've got some time to check that one out. So, there we go. Agonizer from Jakob Hack, a good dude, and uh, I would buy it anyway just to support Jakob uh, Hack. And if you're not aware of Hack Attack, Jakob's YouTube channel, then uh, go and check it out. H A Q A T T A Q. Jakob Hack. He's a good dude, and you should support him. Speaking of good dudes, or more fittingly, good pianos. When I reach for a piano, so whilst I'm not a synth guy, you know what I am? A piano guy. And where do I reach for when I want a good piano? Well, I go no further than the Ravenscroft 275. Now, I've got to shout out Thomas Galane, who many of you may know is a great creator, an iOS creator. He put me onto this and he was telling me for the longest time, he's like, Pete, you've got, to, I won't do his accent, Pete, you've got to check out the Ravenscroft 275. And I'm like, ah, piano apps are a dime a dozen. The the grand piano here in GarageBand is pretty good. I don't know why I need to bother um, Thomas, but eventually he wore me down and I went and checked it out and yeah, it's sex it's sensational. The reason that it's usually $35.99, right now nine, uh, $17.99, is that it is an amazing piano sound. But don't just take my word for it. Uh, let's come over here and play it, shall we? So there's nothing wrong with the GarageBand pianos. So the, the GarageBand pianos are some of their better sounds, especially if you come in here and you use the classical grand. It's a pretty nice sound. 
yeah. So you get a good piano sound with that. But the difference with the Ravenscroft is that you've got infinite customizations and uh, you can really harness it to make it sound like you want it to sound. So if we go to the audio unit extensions and uh, we're going to go to the Ravenscroft 275. Okay, not super easy to play just on the screen. But here's the cool thing you've got in here. You've got the ability to use the equalizer here to change the timbre of the instrument. How cool is that? I just need, let's turn it up a little bit more. So. so you can have that sort of more mellow tone of like an older piano, or you can push the timbre up to make it like a... to make it like a really bright concert piano there. And you've got control over your highs, your mids, and your lows here as well. You can adjust the reverb. So not only the amount of decay you get here, so you can pump that one up. Whoop, we lost it. How nice is that delay? Or you can reduce that down. And then you can even change your reverb. So the size of your room. Bring in a nice big room and then increase the amount of mix that you put in there. A lot of control here. You've even got your velocity curve here, so you can change this around here. You can see how much velocity you got on there. More velocity or less. Oh. <laughs> now I've changed this one here. So you've got complete control over this and you've of course got a heap of presets here. So you can come in here and go, oh, I want to go with the electric piano. Sounds like my uh, my first Casio <laughs> with that piano sound. Or you can go even like the, the old jazz piano is one that I really like. So let's see if we can play some jazz chords. Uh... There you go. So yeah, a lot of stuff in here. Definitely worth, if you're a pianist or if you love good piano sounds, the Ravenscroft 275 is 100% where it's at. And at the moment, uh, it is a lot cheaper than you're usually going to find at around about half price uh, on sale right now. All right, last one. I've, I've left something free. You've been watching this whole thing going... I don't have any money to spend, Pete. I just bought the biggest turkey you've ever seen and gobbled it all down. See what I did there? Um, for Thanksgiving, and I got no money left. Well, guess what? You can uh, jump in and grab GeoShred Play. Now, I haven't... This is another one that I want to spend more time with. All the GeoShred apps are on sale, by the way, at the moment. So the, the actual GeoShreds, so you can upgrade to the regular one. You can buy the regular GeoShred as well. But if you want to find out what GeoShred is all about and learn a bit about the world of GeoShred, jump on into GeoShred Play get it for free. It's very often for free here on the App Store, let's be honest. It's uh, it's 10 bucks, but it goes free, yeah, about once or twice a year. So now is the time. If you do nothing else that I've said here today, jump onto the App Store, download GeoShred Play, and just learn what GeoShred's all about. It may not be for you, but it may be. And if you find it's cool, it has a whole bunch of really cool functions. And again, I highly recommend Jade Star's channel for learning about GeoShred and how to use it and all the cool things that it does. Because... I think, uh, yeah, it, it's just a very unique way of using the touch interface. And it's a, it's a very cool app. So GeoShred for the win. There you go. 13 apps, all really good quality stuff and stuff that uh, I have now bought and added to my collection. And uh, yeah, let's let's throw it out there. If you think I should buy Nano Studio, let's put it to a poll and uh, let, let, uh, let your feelings know down in the comments. Just say Nano Studio, yes, or Nano Studio, no. And then maybe we can uh, experiment and do some nano studioing in the future. Oh, that was fun. I don't, I don't get into the apps much because, um, because you know, we've got Yakka, because we've got Jade Star, we've got people that are looking into the app side of things. I don't tend to have to anymore. Basically, for the last, what, year and a half since Jade started her channel and started how to app on iOS, it's taken the pressure off me big time. Because if, if you want to learn the deep dive of an app, just go and check out Jade. I don't need to do it. All right, um, just buy it. <laughs> no, but see, then I then I, if I buy it now, Jay, then uh, people uh, I can't get people to comment. <laughs> Let's go for it. How much did I spend today? What, what's my what's my bill so far? I bought uh, I haven't bought Filmic Pro yet, but I'll probably grab that. I bought Agonizer. Didn't I buy something else as well? 
God, that's a bit of a worry. I'm, uh, when the receipts start coming through, oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go. Hang on, why, why, why did I just spend forty dollars? Uh, here, here's another tip for tip for young players. I don't know if this is the same in other countries. Let me know if it is or isn't. But <clears throat> um, here we've got two major supermarket chains. We've got Coles and we've got Woolworths. And about once every six months. One of them will have 15% off all their iTunes gift cards. So what do I do? I don't ever connect up anything I uh, or, or spend money in iTunes directly from a credit card. What I do is uh, whenever they have those specials, I'll go and buy $200 or $300 worth, only pay $260 for $300, no, $255 because I'll save 15% off each one. So uh, for $255, bucks, I get $300 worth. And that's my app purchases for the year. Like that, I, I did that. And look, you can use it for everything. I use it for my Netflix subscriptions that are through I, iOS, through iTunes. I use it for my Disney Plus. I use it for my KO Sports here in Australia. Uh, and I use it for all the purchases. And you can even use it for Super Chats. So every time I super chat someone on YouTube, it's coming out of that fund that I have on my Apple account, which I feel better about because I know that I paid 15% less. So I'm taking a little bit back, taking it back. So I don't know if they do the same at Walmart or other places around the world. Uh, but yeah, anytime you see that, like, let's be honest, all of us are going to spend some money on the app store. So if you have some, some disposable income, I know it's not always the case for all of us all the time, but if you have some disposable income and they're on sale, buy them because you're going to use it. And again, anything subscription-based. If you subscribe on your phone uh, through iOS, you've got two big benefits. You can use the money directly from your Apple account, from your, your iTunes account, and you can control the subscriptions from within there. So it all goes through your Apple account. It means that if you want to unsubscribe, you don't have to go through their convoluted process for Netflix or Disney or Hulu or whoever. You can just do it from your phone. You can say, see ya. And it'll say, are you sure you want to leave us? See ya. And then done. Gone. And then, of course, you can use set reminders and do all that sort of stuff. So a lot of cool things uh, going on over there. Uh, hello, Yvette Griggs, late to the party. I uh, think, do we have any questions? Are there any good uh, pedal steel apps? Yes, uh, Steel Guitar by Yonak. I've got a feeling, oh, still got that set up. I've got a feeling that I actually bought Steel Guitar. I did. Look at this. Here you go. Here's, here's bonus. Bonus app. Steel Guitar from Yonak. Uh, I haven't actually used this in a long time. Have I used it ever? I can't even remember how it works. It's not, it's not playing any audio. Um, I haven't I haven't used it. And I haven't got it set up. I've forgotten the I've forgotten the um, but yeah. Oh. Okay, there it goes. There it went. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool. You can actually. Okay, mine just sounds like an alien. But yeah, if you, if you know your way around a steel guitar, uh, I've got a feeling that this would be pretty cool. Uh, and what have we got? We've got some different amps and things you can use, different reverb kind of sounds. Looks like you've got some presets up here. Uh, what have we got? Vintage Open D. Uh, like me some Open D. Very cool. And look, you can use the slide and you can go. You don't want to if you're in open tuning. Uh, but yeah, very cool. You can change up a bunch of stuff. And I think, I think, he says, not knowing at all, uh, it's definitely at least an interapp audio. Or if not, I don't think it's an AUV3. I could be wrong though. Let's have a look here. Uh, audio unit extensions. I don't see it anywhere there. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I got agonizer now. Woot, woot. Um, but I'm almost sure you can do it with interapp audio. Yeah, you can. So you can add it as a as an interrupt audio here, and then you can record over into GarageBand. All right, and uh, yeah, it'll go over into your GarageBand as uh, as an audio file there. So you can uh, you can play around with that to your heart's content. I'm not, not telling you I'm good at it, but it definitely has some potential there, doesn't it? Uh, cool. There you go. We, we were able to answer a question in uh, in real time. 
Uh, yeah, Jade Star's got to clarify there. Uh, GeoShred Play is the free version, and GeoShred Pro isn't free. You can unlock GeoShred Play to Pro, or you can just buy the Pro standalone, which I think is better value at the moment, Jade, because I think GeoShred Pro is one of the ones on sale. In fact, why am I guessing at this stuff when I can just go over to App Slice and find out? <laughs> so uh, there's GeoShred Play, and uh, down here, GeoShred Pro. Yeah, so at the moment, I don't know. Sometimes the in-app purchases don't reflect these ones. So if you want the, the full version of GeoShred, GeoShred Pro, it is $14.99 to get the whole kit and caboodle, usually $24.99. Whereas if you update from within the app, in fact, I can probably try it. Let's, let's go onto my iPad here. If I go to GeoShred, do I even have it installed? Oh, I don't have it installed on my iPad. I'll just download it and install it, but I reckon it's going to cost more. Oh, it's going to take a while to download. I would just buy it. If you want to just get it and then buy the full version, I think it's uh, I think it's better. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm still on the fence about Alum. Geoshred is awesome. Uh, so I bought AUM. That's the other thing I bought today, isn't it? Yeah, I bought, uh, I bought AUM as well. Uh, by the way, are you Ron Ready? Because I'm Ron Ready, and uh, I'm actually going to get my butt off here in time today, because uh, guess who is coming up with his special weekly magazine show right now? I'm stalling for time because I can't find... Where is it? Ron Ward Indy. Let's let's get you the... Uh, here it is. Here he is. Here's, here's Ron, uh, and he's coming up in, if I'm correct... Oh no, he's an hour later. Okay, forget I said anything. We're not, we're not in a rush anymore. But what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this one over here. I think Ron made it a little later because I, uh, I went overtime last week and I went into, uh, I went into Ron's show. Uh, but get yourself over to uh, Ron Ward, Homegrown Indie Live. He does his cool Ron Ready magazine show. Uh, that'll be kicking off in uh, an hour's time. So I'll, I'll make sure I'm over there to, uh, to catch that show and you do as well. Look, look at him. Come on. Who's not doing that? I've set myself a reminder. There we go. Reminders are on. Okay, I'm not, I'm not quite as rushed. We don't have to finish so quickly. So uh, one final call. If you do have any questions, uh, you can just throw the word question in front of your comment. Uh, but we'll say our goodbyes in just a moment. Let's just recap what we've been through here today. If you've just joined us, uh, we, uh, we had a bit of a rant about the, uh, the software. Uh, Apple keeping up with the hardware, with their software. Maybe, maybe not. We talked about right to repair. We talked about the fact that we have uh, some some gear on sale at the moment. Uh, so there is still uh, over on Amazon. If, if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, that is my gear guide. I'm stalling again because I don't have it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> studiolivetoday.com slash gear. So uh, if you go there, in fact, I'll just show you this real quick. Since I, since I now know that we have a couple of minutes, since I'm not going to be running into Ron's show, uh, this is our gear guide. And what you can do at the top here is you can pick your country. So, hey, I'm in Canada. So let's jump into Amazon Canada. And by using this affiliate link, if you make any purchases, they will break off a little chunk and send it my way. So uh, you'll be supporting the channel that way. But um, yeah, there's some, some cool gear that's actually on sale through Amazon at the moment uh oh it's got the m audios oh i didn't realize that they were on there. um so uh, there's the personas so there's the personas uh speakers that i use those are very very cool it's a lot of cool stuff do, do the canadians get the um get the short sm7b as part of the black friday sale uh cyber monday deal oh the mv7 hello <clears throat> i've actually been considering this so the mv7's 40 bucks off this is like the little brother of the um of the 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 SM7B can't be shipped to me because it's in Canada. So if it's 189 Canadian, let, let's see. Uh, this is going to be super selfish here, folks. But just goes to show that it's worth having a look this time of year because I've been considering checking out the Shure MV7 microphone. And uh, is it? Oh, that's weird. It is. There is no special on it. Uh, at regular Amazon uh, here in the US. Well, here in the US, I'm not in the US. Uh, but in the US, but it is. Uh, it's a. It's a Cyber Monday deal in Canada. So there you go, Canadians. You're getting. You're getting the good deals for a change. <laughs> yeah, go Canada. Uh, but anyway, uh, go and check out uh, go and check out the gear guide because it's got all of the gear that I use uh, and that I recommend for your home studio uh, in Australia. There is no well, there is Amazon, but it's not that good. It's uh, it doesn't have great uh, it doesn't have great stuff. Uh, Mike and Dawn have a question. We'll, we'll answer this and then we'll finish off for the day. Have you tried any of the voice to instrument apps? Hum a note and it plays in the instrument you choose. I haven't, but I think Jade's tried some of those voice apps and I think one of those you did was like an audio to MIDI. I know that there's guitar, MIDI guitar 2 that you can use for your guitar and you can kind of hum into that. 
ding. Uh, but yeah, I haven't actually tried them personally, but I'd be interested. And uh, Jade, if you've done one and you're still here, then uh, let us know. Let us know if there's any that you'd recommend. And if anyone else has anything, let us know as well. All right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to let y'all depart. But uh, thank you for hanging out with me over the weekend. For all those that were on Your Music Live, that hung out with me for uh, the the happy hour yesterday. That was a heck of a lot of fun doing some 80s and 90s. And uh, for Garage Band Weekly here today. Uh, so do jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash courses if you do want to check out the studio, uh, the Garage Band User's Guide, the Beginner's Guide over there, studiolivetoday.com slash courses. And uh, studiolivetoday.com has all of the other ways that you can interact and get in touch here with me and with the show. I've also got my brand new channel, Studio Live, yesterday, and another video is going to drop on that one today. So there you go. If you're a subscriber, uh, that you'll get that. And if you're not, check it out, Studio Live today, Studio Live yesterday uh, for that one. All right. Thanks, everyone, for being here. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and I'll see you real soon next time on GarageBand Weekly. Take us out, Cronk Soul. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Ooh. Garage Band, Need an answer to Garage your Band question? Garage John, do you have a suggestion? Pieces are bouncing up on knowledge. I think he might have gone to Garage Band College. But he doesn't know, we'll try and find out. So join the chat and give him a shout. John. Garage Man Weekly. Garage Man Weekly. See ya.